Well, we've got a. Well, we're right in the middle of a uh, weather net uh, coming out of the Commerce Emergency Operations Center. And uh, I'm one of the storm spotters at my house right now. Uh, anyway, there's probably eight other people on the net right now scattered all about uh, Hunt County. Any other stations want to check in this time? So anyway, still taking check-ins. Anyway, there's a weather net going on. Uh, storm spotters are out and about in Hunt County. Thought you'd find it interesting to listen in to a actual severe weather alert. They've already uh, had a report of golf ball size hail uh, near Celeste, uh, Texas, and uh, with damage to vehicles. So uh, <clears throat> this could develop into a kind of a severe, very severe event. Let's see what happens. And that was a bad copy on that note. Yeah, that's going to find a hotel, Mike. We're going to be on Larry to the ELC. Little Larry. Yeah, I just got to watch Team Cattle go north now, if that's where you need me to go to. I can head up towards Greenville if needed. We see the north Greenville might be a good spot. That's the way it's traveling. Hey, you need me to go north out. 34 towards City or 69. The next thing I see right now is going to be between Wolf City and the left, about in the middle. You draw a line and it's moving in the northeast direction. Uh, that's the only uh, severe part of the storm I can see on radar right now. And that's where the severe weather warning is, is for the northern area. Okay, it'll probably be moved out by the time I get there. I'll just go up towards the west and kind of fall in behind it and check for any kind of damage or anything up that way. You say, thank you, Larry. Could you come with your call sign again? Uh, I missed it. Elo Echo Pop Hotel Mike Frolio. I got it. Thank you, sir. Anyway, what's really neat about this is... Uh... <clears throat> If you're an amateur radio operator, is uh, we're hearing actual reports as they happen from the various spotters uh, around in and around Hunt County, and uh, at some point the Weather Bureau may break in and ask for certain reports from certain areas in Hunt County. Uh, they have a link directly to our repeater. Uh, via the internet and echo link, what's called echo link, <clears throat> which uh, you transmit 
using a regular radio like I have here. Uh, it goes into a repeater, goes across the internet, and comes out in another repeater. So, uh, kind of a hybrid. Yeah, way of talking. This is WW5JC. Uh, can you get an update from your location? That was a fellow that reported that golf ball size hail a little earlier. Sounds like it's still hitting the building from the background noise. Anyway, pretty neat. Uh, we know what's going on uh, even before they reported on the TV. <laughs> So Celeste got some golf ball, and now it's marble-sized hail, uh, which is about the size of a dime, or could be as large as a quarter. Uh, and, you know, marbles are all different sizes. It's not really a good term to use. And from the radar, it looks like it's past their location. I don't know if you can actually make it out on that little camera. I've got the radar up on the uh, screen right now, so I can uh, kind of see where the storm is headed. Anyway, we're activated. Uh, let me wait till that gets over. That was the repeater identifying itself with Morse code. Uh, we're activated by a phone call that comes in uh, from the National Weather Service uh, requesting the activation of the storm spotters uh, and listing the repeater. that they'd like to use in case they need to ask questions. So <clears throat> at first we get a notification to activate via phone <clears throat> and then we'll jump on the radio and uh, usually the Commerce Texas Emergency Operations Center takes over the, re the repeater which is owned by the Sabine Valley Amateur Radio Association. The repeater itself is located in Greenville, Texas, on top of the regional hospital there, kind of a perfect uh, place for it. Uh, it has backup power from the hospital, and uh, it's Echo Link enabled. So the Fort Worth Weather Bureau has amateur radio operators that come in when the weather is bad and they get on the radio and contact various uh, amateur radio clubs uh, in the target area to get uh, actual spotter reports. Uh, and uh, so we get basically a direct link to the Weather Bureau and all their meteorologists. So uh, kind of a neat deal that uh, weather people and amateur radio operators kind of have in common. Now, the reason no one is talking is because there's a protocol that we use. Uh, there are certain criteria for reporting from storms. In other words, they're not going to transmit and say, hey, it's raining over here. 
That's not a reportable incident. It's got to be a certain criteria. Funnel cloud, you know, uh, tornado uh, that's actually uh, on the ground, a wall cloud, uh, half inch or bigger hail, any kind of property damage or flooding, or anything that would impact uh, uh, general safety down power lines or things like that. <coughs> so they won't come on the radio unless they've got a reportable event. So when it's silence, uh, you need to just keep listening. Uh, and if the only one that's talking is uh, net control, uh, which is uh, has the call sign WW5EOC, then uh, uh, Really, the storm is not producing uh, any kind of reportable events. It might be actually doing that, but where a storm spotter may not be positioned. KG5GEP, this is WW5EOC. Yeah, uh, go ahead, EOC. Yes, sir, I was trying to see if I could get an update from your location uh, in the northwest area. Uh, sorry about that. The southwest area, Celeste. Yeah, it uh, almost seems like stuff starting to build up back there. Um, the wind just picked up, probably about five to seven miles an hour out of the north. Uh, we just started getting better medium rainfall. Three things. Thank you. So really, he reported uh, only because he was asked to do so by net control, and he basically reported nothing. You know, it's uh, just there a the regular show. Building that's going to be headed towards the city of Three, six, thank you. Hey, John, ELC. talking about right now again I don't know if you can make out this screen but maybe you I can, can point it out go towards the left and check out that area that would be good so here's the primary cell hey, I'll continue on up 69 then uh, you can show my location here at uh, 69 north at FM 1569 So here's the primary sale that came through with that golf ball sized hail report. And there's another sale trailing it, and it looks like it's building in strength right now. So that's what they were talking about. There's a trailing sale behind this main one that appears to be growing stronger. So uh, got to keep our eye on that one. And to help you see that a little bit, I'm just going to turn this screen from its normal position and maybe you can get a little bit better view of the cell. I kind of tilt it your way a little bit. There we go. So you can get a better look at it. So this was the first one that went through. And now we've got a trailing storm that's uh, got a red center in it seems to be growing in size so got to kind of keep an eye on that one and we do have a storm spotter that's kind of trailing this this part of the storm he's behind it we've got several up here that are in the path of the storm so <clears throat> Five minutes ago, I see some breaks in the clouds. 
and uh, John Bison is another spell developing around the last. Yes, sir. There's another cell that has built a pair and is moving towards the Wolf City area at this time. Okay. We're going to make it Wolf City and we'll be monitoring. So anyway, that's uh, kind of give you. So this will give you a little idea of what goes on during the net. I'm not going to trouble you with watching this any longer. I'll cut out some of the big breaks in it and make it a little bit shorter. Like I usually do, I wish you clear skies in 73 and remember to keep looking up for the storms. And to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Everybody be good. See you all later. Well done.